Am I the asshole for setting my daughter's expectations too high? So I, male 29, have a daughter, female 13. If you do the math clearly, I had her young. My daughter is a big part of my life. She's become my best friend easily. Not only have I gotten to experience things I never would have if I didn't have a daughter, but I also get to do things I enjoy with her. It's been a lot of fun. So I have a coworker for about five months, male, 32. We get along relatively well as coworkers. Today at work, I was ordering flowers from a local flower shop. He asked if it was for a date. I said no for my daughter and explained it was just an act of kindness I like to do for her every once in a while, just to make her smile and her day better. He rolled his eyes, so I asked what? He said I was an asshole for setting my daughter's expectations for a future boyfriend too high because she'll want things just because. And she'll probably never have a boyfriend because her expectations are too high. I said, firstly, she's 13 and doesn't need a serious relationship yet. And secondly, if she wants flowers just because from a future relationship, if they're a good person, they'll get them for her because it's a small act. He shrugged and said, I don't know. Now, I don't think I'm setting my daughter's future relationships up for failure for getting her flowers every once in a while. But I can't help but wonder, am I the asshole? By the way, she loved the flowers I got her. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, if you haven't uh, gotten it already from that first <laughs> reading that Marisol did, we are reading Am I the Asshole Stories from Reddit. Now, we did an episode similar to this. Um, I think it was a remastered episode, actually. Remastered episode number 10 titled Am I the Asshole? I think if you're on Google Podcasts, they censor it. So in the <laughs> title, it's like Am I and then like the stars um but yeah we decided to do another one welcome back asshole squared we hope that's a funny title (laughs) um so we have three stories lined up so obviously you heard that first one that she read and we're gonna there's a lot to pick apart here i feel like i don't know there's a lot going on but before we kind of delve into this one and then get into the next two stories that we picked out um we're gonna open some sparkling water now today is a different one. We have some, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced. I jokingly say La Croix. Oh, I, don't know if I it's, thought that was how you're supposed to say it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's La Croix or La Crocs. You know, I think I heard someone say La Croix. It might be La Croix. But yeah, anyways, we got a couple of these. It's the Kiwi Sandia. Oh. Naturally essenced sparkling water. Now, and they're, the, they're in the cans. So unlike, was it last episode that we opened them up on the uh, podcast? I think it might have been the one before. Actually, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, anyways. So we opened up the 1877, or was it 1877, right? Or 1987 or something like that? 1877. Yeah, we those are from HEB. Pretty good. They're like Topo Chico. These ones are flavored in a can, so the experience is going to be a little different. I won't open them too close, but hopefully y'all enjoy. <laughs> Damn. Uh, <laughs> Stop. Disappointing. I, didn't, I didn't know you wanted me to do it too last time i just listened to you yeah yeah I'm trying to get my nail in there marisol is currently struggling to open hers up um struggling no, no do you want me to open it up no way i got this i don't have my key with me actually here you go <laughs> <laughs> all right here's marty spoils the fizz is already out so you're just gonna get to hear the can There was yeah. some fizz in there. Okay, <laughs> let's calm down. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess let's go ahead and dissect that story. Um, very interesting. I know after reading that one, it really made me think of your dad specifically and mm-hmm. like, you know, how he'll get you, like on Valentine's Day, how he gets you stuff and like you get your parents' stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't do that. I mean, I am a guy also, but <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. It was just interesting. That's what I thought of when I pulled that story up and I was like, you know what? Like we should read this one because that seems relatable. Mm-hmm. Well, coming specifically from like the Valentine's Day example. Yeah. I don't really think like my expectations are super high for Valentine's Day. 
just because like my dad and my parents do get me things but it's like i'm not expecting them because also like i'm older now so i'm like oh like y'all don't have to get me anything yeah you know i just kind of like realize that but that's like my perspective you know it's kind of just like a nice gesture and something nice to do but i don't like obviously expect you to do everything that my parents are doing for me you know yeah no absolutely i think like right off the bat a lot of times sometimes you have to think about things but this is one of those stories where i absolutely do not think this guy's the asshole no yeah i don't either i think he's just being like a nice father yeah if anything his co-worker is a dick like what the hell is that man like getting rolling his eyes and being annoyed at that i think i don't know it's it varies like relationship to relationship you know like it's okay to have expectations um i do agree that maybe sometimes like initially you shouldn't really be setting up like these huge expectations until you've gotten to know the person and Mm -hmm. you've earned their trust you know but i don't i don't think getting something as small as flowers for your daughter is gonna set them up to be like that you know what i mean no yeah i definitely think you should have standards like for a relationship or Mm -hmm. who you like want to date and be with but yeah again like personally it wasn't like oh like he has to get me stuff for valentine's day yeah like no like i never thought of it like that and maybe like some people are and that's like an expectation they have yeah but just because like my dad gets me stuff for valentine's day i don't expect anything from it but yeah. everybody is different. Mm-hmm. So it really just depends. Yeah. I mean, I think like for me, and I know we've talked about this and this is actually like a topic that <clears> I think we, <throat> we want to cover more in a future episode, but it's about love languages and mm-hmm. and learning like your partner's love language. And so, you know, if the language that your partner has, right, to be loved is like the act of gift giving, right? Or anything like that that's something that you have to explore and that's something that you have to nurture and develop and you know tell your partner because mm-hmm. you know nobody's gonna know that like i think i know going into our relationship whenever we were first getting together like once it kind of really became a serious thing my dad was like okay like you you gotta start doing these things and i was like what <laughs> and he, like he's the one who set it up in my head he was like you gotta pay for everything like you need a job oh, no. you need to have money and you have to like buy stuff and so i think just in him telling me that like i think obviously he perceives his value or his merit to the relationship as having a lot of money like I mean, he makes a lot mm-hmm. right i ain't gonna lie but you know that's that's not the reason my mom's with him yeah they were broke when they got together so (laughs) why i don't know why he would think that that's like a necessity you know what i mean like we now we have a pretty good balance i know for like the whole first year of our relationship i think i paid for almost everything yeah and i would tell you like let me pay and you were like no i want to do it i have a job because at the time i didn't have a job Mm -hmm. so i was like i mean okay but like i had money saved up yeah and then i got a job i think specifically because i wanted you to stop telling me like i didn't have a job (laughs) so i shouldn't have to pay yeah yeah but it's def i think parents can set up expectations right Mm -hmm. like i mean i had minor expectations like i'll hold the door if i remember i don't do it all the time (laughs) but you know i'll hold the door open or get you things if it reminds me of you every now and then make Mm -hmm. gestures to like pay for food and stuff like that but that's like normal stuff you know what i mean and we're we're really in it for the long term now so you know some of the stuff like that kind of is just gonna not be expected but like paying for this stuff like at some point we're gonna have combined income so it really, won't really it's, matter yeah we'll just be like oh paying. i'll use my card or yeah. i have my card yeah you know um no but i don't know there's honestly at the beginning i was like there's a lot to dissect not really there's just that his co-worker was a dick yeah, well, I also think it depends on just, like, your partner. Like, mm-hmm. do they want to do those things for you? Because, like, the dad had said at the last part, like, yeah, if it's a small gesture. And, I mean, if that person cares about her and she wants it and she expresses yeah. that, then maybe they'll do it for her every now and then. Yeah. Because it's not like he's getting her flowers every week, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, too. Like, It's just, like, random acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. 
And it doesn't even need to be like flowers. It could be something small. Like maybe your significant other notices that you're having a really stressful day and they get you something that you enjoy, like coffee or a snack or they offer, hey, you want to go out and do this thing that I know you like to do, you know? You do that. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's why I'm bringing it up because it's, it's from a place of like I, I do it. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, it's it's small stuff like that. And it's not like I do that on a weekly basis or on an everyday basis. It's, you know, it's, it's not rare. I don't think it happens at least once a month, I'd say. But yeah, I mean, we've just been like busy. So that's why we don't have as much like freedom to go out and be like, hey, like, let's go do this. Yeah. We're but we definitely like <laughs> we definitely like go out and get coffee yeah. if we're stressed. You know, I've noticed that. Like, yeah. you'll bring it up. You'll be like, can we get coffee? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's get coffee. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just stuff like that. So, yeah, he's definitely not setting up his daughter for failure, mm-hmm. like, in relationships. No, yeah. I feel like, like you were saying, I think it's the parents that, like, put expectations on their child to act mm-hmm. a certain way in a relationship. Because I know my parents gave me some, like, rules to follow, to, like, respect you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Okay. I mean, like, I wasn't going to do, like, the stuff that they were mentioning, but, like, <laughs> I mean, it's good to know. Like, they just wanted me to treat you right. Yeah. Well, that's nice to know. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it, it is different from relationship to relationship. But honestly, like, let's say, you know, his daughter grows up. She gets in a relationship. It's a long-term thing. And the guy never like does these random random acts of kindness or whatever and let's say she does get upset with it again i think she has the right or like she does she can get Mm -hmm. upset right and that's fine but she definitely she has to tell him yeah she has to let him know and that goes back to the whole love language thing Mm -hmm. you know yeah because i know you like physical touch right like we could just be holding hands and stuff and yes. you're having like a great time or like personal time just like yeah. being in the room with you yeah and mine is personal time and i think just like talking with you because i know like i i'm mainly like a quiet person yeah but when i'm with you like i don't i don't shut up like <laughs> i just love talking to you yeah so it's like i don't know you just really have to let your partner know because I wasn't aware of love languages. Like, I think I had been introduced to it, like, maybe a year prior we got together. But it was kind of just, like, something random I saw, like, on the internet. Yeah. I didn't really look into it. So whenever you, like, told me, like, what your love language was, like, now that's always in the back of my head. You know? And it's not like you were upset that I didn't hold your hand all the time. Because mm-hmm. I think we did, like, hold hands. And we're always, like, together and spend time together. But it's just, like, knowing Mm-hmm. that that makes you happy like i'll just give you random hugs <laughs> because i know it'll make you happy yeah now that was that was a nice uh warm-up i think for what's to come mm-hmm. now nah, the next to, two aren't the that next bad two? <laughs> the next two aren't that bad they really aren't but like i'm interested because i only read them like right now mm-hmm. you have looked at these <laughs> okay here we go so into the next one My wife and I have been married for six years now. My wife, Grace, is beautiful. She's a very girly girl, liking things like pink flowers, purses, and heels. Before the pandemic, Grace would always dress up for for a runway. She would have on makeup, heels, dresses, perfume, smooth skin, etc. During the pandemic, though, my wife's job got moved to at home. She stopped her beauty routine and spent most of the day in long t-shirts, shorts, sweatpants, or her pajamas. I understood it since we weren't really going anywhere. Grace also stopped wearing makeup, doing her hair, and shaving. While this bothered me because I like having a beautiful wife, I figured it was still her job. Uh, It was till her job got moved back to the office. So now things are open again. My job has been moved to the office, but Grace told me she didn't want to return and opted to keep working from home. Her wardrobe has completely changed in the two years of the pandemic. She hardly wears her dresses, cute shirts, skirts, makeup, or anything like before. It's men's t-shirts with sayings on them like (laughs) I'm grumpy, jeans, sweatpants, and tennis shoes. 
and she has completely stopped shaving and waxing. Now she'll dress up a bit if we go out or if we have company, but that's really it. Grace tells me it's too much work. So now for the part where I may be an asshole. This is the part where you might oh, be an maybe. asshole. So before the pandemic, we went on a we went on a date night. Since we haven't gone in, I suggested a night out at an expensive restaurant. I did pick this restaurant on purpose. Grace said no and suggested we order takeout. When I refused, she ju- see, uh, blah, sorry. When I refused, she suggested a restaurant like IHOP or Chili's. Her excuse: she didn't feel like shaving her legs for one of her dresses and wanted to be comfortable. I snapped, saying it wouldn't hurt you to dress up for once, and she accused me of only liking her looks. This isn't true. I told her I was just tired of feeling like I'm living with a homeless woman. Grace ended up locking herself in our bedroom. I know my words were harsh. I ordered a pizza and tried to apologize, but Grace wouldn't open the door. I slept on the couch. Right now, Grace is still giving me the cold shoulder, refusing to speak to me or be in the same room as me. I know I hurt her feelings with my words. However, I think this is depression or isolation from the pandemic since before Grace had no problem looking like a model. Am I the asshole? See, this one has a lot. (laughs) Yeah, this shit. What the fuck? Now, these are like, these are expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are some fucking expectations, man. But it's understandable. See, so this is what, not the whole situation understandable. Let mm-hmm. me let me explain what I just said. So my mom has always told me, like, when we move into, e- or blah, when we move in with each other, right? Yeah. There's going to be expectations that we have of, you know, how we're going to run the house. Because we've never lived together. Yeah, yeah, we hang out every day, but we've never done everyday things you know like taking care of a house you know like is something going to be too dirty for one of us and the other's not really going to care you know stuff like that and so i think the expectation was set that that's just something that his wife is going to do and so i understand why he's upset but i think the the emotions behind it overwhelmed him and in this case i think he's being an asshole right now He's not trying to, he's not looking at it from another perspective. It's Mm -hmm. only until he hurt his wife now that he's trying to think of other reasons. But then he's blaming it all on depression rather than the fact that maybe his wife just doesn't want to do it. Just doesn't want to do it. Like she's like, this is a long ass process and I don't want to fucking do it anymore. I mean, like, that could be a possibility of depression or isolation. Yeah. But. I mean, he, for one, he didn't ask about, like, her feelings or anything like that. Yeah. It was mainly just, like, how she looked on the outside. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, I think it's it's different because she had always looked like that for him, you know, and always done those things. Yeah. But, I mean, at some point, like, was he just going to expect her to do that until she, like, died? Yeah. Like, that. that's what I was thinking about. Like, at some point, she was going to stop. Mm-hmm. Like, who knows? Like, maybe if they had decided to get kids, like, it would have happened at some point because she's right. It's a lot to do every single day. So, I mean, like, I feel like, yeah, you're right. Like, his emotions did just, like, take toll of him. Yeah, and I think the thing that bothers me the most, right, about this situation is that he never, at least according to the story, he never once told his wife what he was feeling. Instead, he sets up this elaborate thing of purposely... putting reservations in for a nice restaurant Mm -hmm. and he was like then in the hopes of like okay well now she has to get ready as opposed to just approaching her in a calm manner expressing his feelings towards the situation Mm -hmm. but no he had to do that and so then when stuff doesn't go to his plan then he gets upset you know yeah the thing that just bothered me more because i can kind of understand like where his expectations come from just because Mm -hmm. she had been doing it like, Every day, yeah. Yeah. But the thing that kind of ticked me off was he said, because I like having a beautiful wife. And I'm like, mm, red flag. You yeah. shouldn't think she's just beautiful when she has makeup on and when she, like, yeah. is all dressed up. Like, this is your person. Like, it's okay to have, like, ideas of what she's going to look like, I guess. Not even, really, because it's her body. But, like, I don't know. Like, he has expectations, right? Yeah. And she's kind of set him up for that. 
So, I mean, understandable. Mm -hmm. But you should still think she's beautiful, even yeah. when she's in a baggy sweatshirt. Because I know, like, some people, I watch, like, YouTube couples sometimes, mm -hmm. and they're, like, are the guys usually, like, I think she looks better with my shirt on, like, a big T-shirt, mm -hmm. you know? And I know you say, like, you like, well, you don't like me better, but, like, you think I look cute when I'm in just, like, pajamas. Yeah. You know? And, like, no makeup, no nothing. It's definitely different from guy to guy. No, yeah, definitely. So, just like in the previous story. Like, mm -hmm. it depends on relationship, but I don't know. Yeah. No, he's... Even just the wording throughout this post. I think that was the main thing where I was like, yes, you are the asshole. Right? Because you shouldn't be saying, like, I like having a beautiful wife. Because that's yeah. insinuating that you think she's ugly any other time. I know. And that's kind of like what he's saying. Look right here. There's this one line right here. So <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Um, sweatpants, pajamas, and go back to the office. I think they're open again. It was about like living with a homeless woman or something. Oh like yeah. That. It's in the last little paragraph. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, it says right here. It said so she accused me of only liking her looks. This isn't true. I told her I was just tired of feeling like I'm living with a homeless woman. Oh my gosh. Like if you told me you're tired of living with a homeless woman. Yeah, that's same <laughs> reaction. Like I would be so upset. That is crazy. Like, oh my goodness. Like, is she acting any different or is it simply the cosmetic thing that he's being, yeah. that he's upset like, about? If she's still loving you the same. Yeah. And like, acting the same maybe even doing like the same house tours i don't know how like it works for them yeah but oh my gosh it's just like one thing yeah that that's kind of mean though like i mean if she wasn't like helping around the house at all yeah and just like making a mess i mean i can understand where the frustration would come from but it's simply just like how she looks he doesn't have control over that yeah i, I don't know there's just a way to approach these things like, yeah he definitely used wrong wording horrible wording like homeless woman i know you're like sir you're about to be homeless get out of this uh, house. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah it's this situation was just not in this guy's favor i feel like mm -hmm. there's no way that he posted this not knowing that people were probably gonna be like no nah, this dude's the asshole well maybe he did it so he could get like i don't know so you just get other opinions like not on the situation specifically but maybe his character maybe he's trying to get himself in check we don't know yeah Because sometimes these people be posting these and i'm like there's no way that you like reevaluated the situation and typed it out and was like there's no way i'm the asshole like everyone's gonna agree with me Cause it's like no you clearly are i don't know some people just don't look at their their wording no yeah i think there's just yeah this guy needs to have he needs to take a step back he needs to look from the outside in because right mm -hmm. now he's just letting emotions overwhelm him and he's mm -hmm. he's he's acting before thinking you know and i think a lot of guys have that problem i know i i currently have that problem it's been worse and it's not like i do horrible things but um it's it's small stuff you know but in this case he's he kind of blew it out of proportion and just no, yeah. yeah, I think all of us have, like, things that we may not tell our partner yeah. until they get to, like, I don't know, like, you're super upset about it. Yeah. But it's just, like, how you approach it, too. Because I know yeah. sometimes, like, you get you get annoyed, but you have, like, a calm way of saying things, mm -hmm. you know? And it doesn't look like that was a calm way that he yeah. had said that. No, definitely. I mean, it avoids conflict, but it also shows that, like, you understand that it's a sensitive topic mm -hmm. and you're trying to approach it in a way where you both can talk about it. In this case, it was an immediate re reaction. He didn't think about it. And now like, she's perceiving that as, like, he fucking, you know, he hates me or whatever, or stuff like that. And it's like, how could you say something so rude? <laughs> and, like, so now her reaction is completely understandable as well in this situation no yeah and i think just appearance is like a sensitive topic mm -hmm. especially coming from like your partner because you think they're supposed to 
always like look at you like you look amazing yeah but i know like i've asked you like do i look okay and you're like or i'll ask you like if my makeup looks okay because i don't mm. always wear makeup and sometimes like i'm not sure i don't know mm. and you'll be like mm, it's a little cakey and i'm like i'm taking it off <laughs> 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 and i and you're saying it in a nice way yeah but it's like i already know that yeah and i mean i can't help that it looks like that that's just how makeup's gonna look yeah but because i'm not used to wearing it it's like mm, no so then I, then i just go and take it off yeah i don't know that's i've always been one like mm-hmm. i like mm-hmm. minimal mm-hmm. makeup i don't know it just kind of brings out uh i don't know how to word it but it's like a natural beauty kind of like, like your appearances they just highlight them yeah it's, yeah yeah you know what I mean? like you're not trying to change how you look you're just accentuating your natural self yeah also a lot faster <laughs> that is true yes it is a lot faster <laughs> um that that was a juicy one for sure no it really was i'm excited to see this next one because it's a little longer and this... already like the title i'm like mm, oh what yeah what is happening here there's some stuff we can get into for sure with this so <clears throat> i'm gonna go ahead and get into this one so oh i just noticed that on the top of the post, it it says like the majority of what people have said. So that last one, people said that this guy was the asshole. <laughs> the first one was like a newer one. That that one was posted four hours ago. This next one though, the majority voted this person, not the a hole. So let's go into this. Let's see what we think about it, and uh, we'll give our opinions on it. So am I the asshole for refusing to switch shifts with a coworker? I started with my current job about a year ago or so. I lucked out and was hired for first shift. My coworker Mel started probably six to eight months ago. She takes over my job for second shift. We talk sometimes during the shift change and have worked overtime. First shift Saturdays together several times. I wouldn't say we're friends, but we're friendly, work acquaintances. Friday during shift change, Mel asked if it'd be possible for me to change shifts with her. She comes on first and I go to second shift permanently. I was caught off guard and said, hmm why she said something about her sister can't watch her kid in the afternoon anymore and now she has to be off with um when her kid gets off of school she claims that she had she asked just to go to first shift but they said there aren't any openings so she figured she'd ask me i said no and left her for the day she brought it up again yesterday wanted to see if i reconsidered over the weekend i said yeah no she said, "Ugh, you're single and don't have kids. You don't understand how hard it is to be a single parent. I need to go on first. And I could help her out, but I'm just choosing not to. I just kind of shrugged and grabbed my stuff and left. Then today, my manager approached me and asked if I'd be interested in going on second. I said no. She said, oh, because Mel had some family stuff come up and needs to be on first for a while. I said, yeah, she told me I can't do it. Manager tried guilting me about how we, quote unquote, should help each other and yada, yada, yada. That she's afraid Mel might quit, and she was just trying to work something out. She has kids, though, so of course she's going to side with Mel. When Mel came in and said, just checking one more time, I said no again. And she said, man, come on, please, you could help me out, but you just don't want to. It's not like you need to be on first shift and have obligations like a family. I just left because I'm not arguing. Honestly, I probably could go on second shift, but I just don't see the point. When I was looking for a job, I specifically applied for places for first shift because I hate second shift. Working second shift makes it impossible for me to have a social life or do anything else. It's not like I need to be on first. It's more of a convenience thing. Am I the asshole for saying no? I'm going to say no. I agree. She is not obligated Mm -mm. to do anything that a co-worker asks of her. And she's not the manager either. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, if she was the manager and could make the shifts and, like, switch him, yeah. then, I mean, maybe. But, I don't know. It just sounds like the job doesn't want to work with the other girl. Yeah. And, I don't know, like, listen, I get it. You got a kid. Times are tough. But you can't expect others to help you out in these situations because everybody is battling their own demons and dealing with their own shit. And so... You know, I'll have people text me all the time. I love my current job. Let me tell you, 
there's a few people who do text me. It's not just me, but like, you know, the majority of the uh, place that I work at, you know, about picking up shifts. And as I've done it a few times, and as much as I'd love to do it every time somebody texts me out of the kindness of my heart, sometimes I just can't. I need to say no because I need to prioritize sleep or I need to prioritize work or maybe I have already obligations to go out with you or other things, you know? Yeah. So in this situation, like, it absolutely is a convenience thing. For all we know, this girl in this story could have classes or, you know, she sees family or something like that during the times that she's not working. Yeah, I kind of thought it was a little rude to say you don't have any family obligations. Yeah, because right? Just because she doesn't have kids doesn't mean she doesn't have a family. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have kids. Yeah. But I love seeing my grandparents. Yeah. And even though, like, I can't right now, like, that sucks. And if I had the opportunity to not work on Sundays, like, I definitely wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Or, like, if I could, like, switch every now and then. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, just because you don't have kids doesn't mean you don't have a family. Yeah. And it's kind of rude to say that, especially when you're trying to persuade somebody to switch shift with shifts with you. Yeah. No, for sure. I think, I don't know, just... Is there absolutely nobody else that this woman can ask to? That's what I'm saying. Like, is there another position that she can do? Yeah. Uh, we don't even know, like, the job. Exactly. But, yeah. But I'm thinking it's something... I don't know why. Like, when you read it to me, I was picturing, like, Starbucks. <laughs> Starbucks? I don't know why. I mean, we can go with that. Yeah. I don't know. This In is this... how I think about it. I was thinking of, like, a fast food place. Because at Chipotle... Really? some girl would work in the morning Mm -hmm. up until i got there and then we would switch because we were the cashiers Mm. and we were the only two that would switch yeah i was imagining like heb because i used to work there you know it might just be because like we've had like those experiences yeah but i know like i was thinking more chipotle because you only have one cashier Mm -hmm. and so maybe like that's what they do like what they have is only one person yeah but still like this girl doesn't work every day yeah you know at least i don't it's implied that she doesn't Mm -hmm. so like why doesn't the other girl like ask somebody else on the other days yeah i don't know that's definitely it's a lot like there's a lot of details we don't know but just going off of what was said i don't think she is she's not obligated to do anything yeah like you can be a kind person but you don't have to do what other people ask because they're just going to take advantage of you yeah exactly see that's you have to set boundaries you know i think if you're just trying to do like a temporary shift change like oh do you mind if we could change shift for like the week you know like while i figure this out that is i'd probably be game i'd be like okay yeah that's fine i'd just be like this is a contract yeah i don't need my shifts back (laughs) after this week (laughs) i know but to be like permanently switch you know after they probably that she's already developed a schedule of her own like i Mm -hmm. i don't schedule every single thing but i i like to know when things are happening so that way when stuff isn't happening like that's when i can do other things that i need to get to you know uh, that's a also a big reason of why like i don't always accept stuff like even though i'm not working or maybe i don't have like a obligation it's like i don't want to pick up that shift because during that time is kind of when i planned on doing some other things you know maybe i wanted to wash my car and just relax and enjoy personal time Mm -hmm. because i'm stressed as shit you know it's like you just don't know you know like you said everybody has their own things going on yeah yeah it it's absolutely true you can't you can't immediately go into situations expecting things of others because you just don't know them personally. And that's literally what she said. She was like, we don't really know each other. Like we just kind of say hi and are friendly during shift change. Yeah. But they're not even friends. I know. Like I'd understand if like a really good coworker of mine who I talk to all the time asked me to do something. And like that's happened at all of my jobs. I absolutely would do that thing because you know, we're good friends. And like, I know that if I'm in need of something, like you'll be there for me you know but yeah it's kind of like if you don't know this person yeah i don't know no absolutely another point i wanted to get into also is that it is the it's you know it's the manager's job to kind of fix this situation and Mm -hmm. if the only possible solution that they can come up with is constantly pestering this girl to switch shifts then what does that tell you about the manager you know it's there's got to be another angle that you can go at you know maybe 
I I don't know. Hire somebody else to pick up after this this woman and give her like part time leave or like maybe ask like a closer like hey can you switch right because then maybe this woman has somebody that can watch them at night and then she can work at night. You know what I mean? There's got to be something else. There's there's got to be sacrifices that this woman is willing to make and she can't expect others to be the only ones making sacrifices. Yeah, well, I was thinking too. Again, like we don't know, but maybe she could just switch like her her job like what she does yeah that is another thing too like if it's just a simple switch and not like a whole training process you know yeah and i mean it's you also gotta understand too like her situation in life like she does have kids and so no definitely like and it's hard having kids yeah like she can't she can't not be making money right Mm because she has to support her children no yeah but you know it's just it's having that that constant thought in your head that you know other people are not obligated to do things for you so you you shouldn't count on that you could mm-hmm. definitely still ask like it's fine that she asked in the first place you know and that second reconsideration but after that then she kind of should have just stopped she shouldn't have gone to the manager like she should have tried to figure something else out and you know, you just you have to make sacrifices sometimes, even though you really enjoy a situation. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's a big reason why I left HEB. You know, I just it was a sacrifice that I had to make. Like, I enjoyed the job. Pay was amazing. But it just for personal reasons, I needed to leave. And it sucked. And I definitely was not making a lot of money for a long time. But, you know, here I am in a much better place. And I am very happy to say as well that I've recently, you know, uh, no, I'm not going to say that yet. But oh my gosh. anyways, a very good thing happened at my job. I, I just don't want to say because I don't know if they were like waiting or anything like that. So, okay, okay, okay. But I know I'm very happy about the current update at my job. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We should mention it in the next one if they like tell people yeah in the next episode we can definitely mention it but for this one just because it comes out uh on friday which is tomorrow because we're recording this on thursday lol okay this is the only time we've done it all right yeah we're usually very ahead but we just we've been really busy with finals and so um you know here we are doing understandable but but we're getting it done exactly okay we're here um (laughs) No, but yeah, definitely she was not the asshole in this situation. And I don't think that other woman was an asshole either, but she definitely, you know, she had expectations of other people. No, yeah. I mean, no one's really the asshole, like you said. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It is about making sacrifices, especially yeah. if you were in harder situations. Yeah. And something my professor last semester actually told me was that, she liked one of these characters in a book because I'm an English major. Mm-hmm. And that's like what we're talking about, books. And she was like, this character kind of goes through life a little easier because she doesn't expect people to owe her anything. And I was like, okay. Like, I kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. Because it's true. Like, nobody owes you anything. They don't owe your time, their love, their compassion, empathy. Mm-hmm. Like, It's really nothing. Like, people do that out of the kindness of their heart. Yeah. And, I mean, sometimes, you know, like you, like, you want to take these people's shifts, but you just can't. You know, and that's not saying you're a bad person for not taking them. It's just, like, you have other things going on. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even, um, what is it? A lot of people feel like, you know, if you don't have something like create like a planned thing going on like there's there's not a reason that you can't take the shift you know and that's a stupid ass Uh. mindset (laughs) because i don't care if i don't have anything going on i don't want to do anything and that includes working in this allotted time you know what i mean yeah like i just i just want to be some some jobs just need to like understand that yes you need personal time yes personal time especially when you're a part-time worker oh my goodness you are adding them without adding them (laughs) yes bro oh my fuck like it's just 
a work-life balance is so hard Mm -hmm. and then on top of that we're also students and i know we're only doing part-time work it's not like we're dropping 40 hours every week but it's like um i don't it's just there needs to be a balance it's a lot okay just because like we're not doing 40 hours a week doesn't mean it's not hard like everybody can only handle so much exactly and thankfully like we're in positions where we don't have to work 40 hours a week Mm mm-hmm but, you know, unfortunately, there's some people who are yeah, and they have to do that. But it's like they still need a life. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like that's important for them to have as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Nobody should have to struggle just to live. And it sucks that that happens. Um, I don't know. It's crazy shit. And <sighs> I'd definitely be upset for sure. No. I'd probably yeah. be a little annoyed. And the girl's been there longer too so that's what i looked at yeah that's there's that as well like usually it's like seniority and i mean sometimes that shouldn't always be the case yeah but again like she's not expected to do anything yeah like she she literally said she applied for this job and specifically wanted that shift because you know it worked best with her own personal schedule and then to have this other person come in after the fact and like requesting all that it's it's definitely annoying but you know context matters and i understand both sides 100 mm-hmm. percent. but in this case if i had to choose a side it'd definitely be with the the person who made the post yeah because personally i wouldn't give up my shift <laughs> yeah if i no definitely for sure i hate midday shifts as it is so i would not want to be man all i work for midday shifts <laughs> they really do take up all your day they do you can't do anything like at all because like, then it's like it's a lot. Like, sometimes I don't mind because I'm like, yeah. ooh, break time. But then, like, because there's not a lot of people there. Yeah. But then I'm like, damn. Yeah, I like. I could be with my family. <laughs> I like shifts in the morning or shifts at night, like closing shifts. Mm-hmm. But the ones, like, in the middle of the day at, like, such odd times, it's like, I don't know, like a two to six or something. What is that? Like, no. Oh, my gosh. I love morning shifts. Yeah. They're my favorite thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like, I usually close and it's a lot, but I mean for Costco, even opening is a lot. Yeah. Like I've gone and specifically like I look at clothing cause I don't drive the forklift so I wouldn't have to do that anyways. Yeah. But man, they're moving a lot of things cause even the clothes changes positions. Like yeah. I go and I'm like, um, the pants were just here last night. I know cause I put them there and they're like, Oh, morning moved them. I'm like, <laughs> my gosh, why? Like, now I don't know how to help anybody. Yeah. But no, I love, um, I love morning shifts. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, usually we go before the store even opens. So you can just, like, have, like, a good mindset before a bunch of people come. No, absolutely. <clears throat> no, but those were some solid Am I the Asshole stories. Definitely. I really, I really enjoyed it. I, I've been looking forward to this episode for a while, ever since we planned the second one. And I think this will be a reoccurring thing. I can't say like the frequency of it, but you know, we, a third one will at some point come out for sure. Yes, yes, yes. It will. <clears throat> I love doing these. They're honestly so fun. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, they're fun too, because it's like, it's almost like a reaction video. Like we're literally just reacting to what we're reading. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love those of that one YouTuber watch with his fiance. Oh yeah, um, Cody Ko, and then his um, fiance Kelsey. I forgot her last name. I think it starts with a K. Also, it does. It's Kel- uh, Kelsey, Kelsey, <laughs> and Cody. They have hilarious videos. Like they're, they're so funny. yeah, they're posted on Cody's channel, but like they just react to stuff, and it's fucking hilarious. Um. I think that's why I like these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love watching those. So I'm like, I love doing them. <laughs> no, they're fun. Um, but other than that, I think we're at a pretty solid place to close it out. Because it's currently 11.06. Yeah. My mama texted me. I know. We still got shit to do. <laughs> I still got homework. I got to edit this, get it uploaded. So um, before we close out the episode... Be sure to follow us on our socials. And I'm being like 100% like, please follow us. We're trying to get that Instagram count up. We're trying to get that Twitter count up. Facebook, eh, could care less. But please do get it up. (laughs) Um, 
at live with jam pod that's a tag on all three it's the same you can find us there podcast logo is our profile picture um we definitely just want to create more engagement and we want to get the same amount of engagement over there as we do here on the show because as you know we just reached like a thousand consecutive downloads which is amazing so you know if we could try and reach those numbers on our socials that would be awesome just that because would be insane exactly because i feel like the majority of our listeners don't follow us on our socials and so they miss out on a lot of like key and vital information you know Mm -hmm. which is just a little like note which is very interesting to me Mm -hmm. because how did y'all find this podcast yeah what the hell i want to sincerely know so please follow us and dm us because i'm trying to figure this out well maybe they like did analytics just push them like push us over there or what is happening i want to know here's the thing too like I'm going to spit some numbers out for y'all. So on our Instagram analytics, we actually have like thousands of impressions. So like a shit ton of people see us, but they don't fucking follow us, which what is understandable. Is you don't, <laughs> nobody's obligated to follow us. Let me no, just throw yeah, that out there. It's just like, but you know, interesting. we're getting out there. So I think a lot of people find our podcast through Instagram or through like, I haven't checked our Twitter analytics or Facebook, but mm-hmm. you know, it's the same thing. Probably just people are seeing us and finding us and listening to us, but not following us on the socials. I definitely see that because sometimes I do just like save a post yeah, and then I like look at what they're, they're doing. Yeah. Or that's like uh, on YouTube, like a lot of people will watch stuff, but they won't subscribe or like it, you know, Yeah. So. which also another thing y'all, y'all need to check out the, the YouTube channel. Cause it's finally like up to date. Let's go. Um, uh, round of applause for you. <laughs> I know it took a while to get there. I was just so lazy about it, but we actually have like over 600 impressions on the YouTube channel, which means we're getting out there. People are finding us somehow, or maybe they're searching it up. Mm-hmm. And a funny thing actually too, is that you can actually see like what people search for to get to us. And the number one most searched thing, are you ready for it to find our oh, no. podcast? Jonathan <laughs> Chavez. It is the number one most searched thing to find our podcast. I'm so dead. We need to make something for Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> I know when his episode came, that that is our in our top three most listened episodes. So I sh- said, okay, Jonathan, you're coming <laughs> back on the podcast. No, for sure. We got to have him on. all my <laughs> other buddies on too. But um, yeah, be sure to follow us. Get us up there. We'd greatly appreciate it. And there was something else I was going to mention. Oh, yes. Uh, review us and rate us please we on all of our podcast platforms i think we are reviewed and rated um everybody's been kind enough to rate us five stars but you know leave a a review leave a rating and you know just let us know what you think of the show like honest opinions yeah we only want to get better for y'all exactly let us know (laughs) but um that was really all i had did you have anything else to add before we close out the episode Nah, just thank y'all for listening. I still can't believe we got to a thousand downloads. That's such a big number. Yeah, I know. I can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> like, I tell people that we have a podcast. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, yeah, we just hit a thousand downloads. Like, oh my <laughs> nothing God. crazy. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, because they ask. Yeah. You know, like, oh, well, like, so do y'all cute. have a lot of followers? And I'm like, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. Um, but thank y'all. I really appreciate it. We appreciate mm-hmm. it um but yeah it's been fun awesome can't wait to do the next one um and we will catch you in the next one bye Bye.